we are now going to inject Mr. Basavaraj with Botox. Uh, prior to the injection, I have uh, loaded the Botox into a 1 ml tuberculin syringe and it has a separate 30 gauge needle onto it. Before I begin the injection, I would make sure that the hub of the needle is in line with the markings on the syringe so I can see how much I am injecting while I am going in. It's very essential to doubly check that the needle is firmly uh, pressed into the syringe and it is not loose. And I would prefer to have my thumb ready on the piston of the syringe so that I can inject. And the non-dominant hand would help me to show me the areas where I am going to inject because the patient is going to have spasms while we are injecting. So it is necessary that you hold the spasms away while you inject. So let us begin with his left side. I am going to start with the upper eyelid medial injection which is pretarsal. We already had applied relocks in that area for last 30 to 45 minutes. So I just go under the skin, lift the edge and inject 0.1 ml in that area. Then I come laterally, just go under the skin, lift it up and inject. Though these injections are supposed to act on the muscle, it is not necessary to poke the muscle to inject. Eyelid does not have fat below the skin, so you can directly load the injection onto the muscle if you inject subcutaneously. Now I am giving the mid pupillary injection in the pretarsal region, just going to hub depth of the needle, injecting and coming out. And my non-dominant hand actually keeps the eye open, so even if the patient suffers a spasm during the injection, it doesn't come in your way of injection process. So each site is receiving 0.1 ml with a 30 gauge needle. For the lateral injection, uh, some doctors would suggest you to go away from the eye, uh, though that is safer from the point of view of not poking the eye accidentally. But if you are well in control, then coming from the lateral aspect is in fact better because patient doesn't notice the syringe which they are worried about sometimes. So the eyelid injections are now over. I would now inject the brow and for the brow it is essential to keep your thumb on the superior orbital rim because many patients of this age would have brow ptosis and you don't want to inject too close to the orbital rim. So I would keep my thumb there and at the pre-decided previous spot I am going to go slightly deeper than what we would have done in the eyelid because the brow would have some sub-brow fat pad. So the junction of medial and central third and the second junction of central and lateral third. These are the two spots that we had chosen for injection. Each one received 0.1 ml. Finally I would give one in the center which is the procedures. So that completes the left side for the injection. You can keep a bud or a tissue handy with you just in case there is some ooze, you can dab that. So I have just changed the syringe and we are going to now inject the right side. Again my non-dominant hand is going to hold the eyelid pushed apart. We will start with the medial retarsal injection. Just going underneath the skin, lifting it up slightly and raising a wheel very slowly. The slower you inject, the less pain the patient will have. You will also have the lateral retarsal here. So the upper medial and upper lateral are over. We'll inject the pretarsal lower eyelid in the mid pupillary plane. It's always important to finish off the eyelid injections first because the eyelid skin is thin. 
and then you move to the brow after having given brow injections it's not a good idea to come back to the eyelid because the needle sharpness is lost by then so we have finished the mid pupillary lower eyelid the lateral canthal lower eyelid and the fifth point which is 1 cm lateral to the lateral canthus now the brow injections as described earlier place a finger on the orbital rim and then give the first one which is at the junction of medial and the central third of the brow and the second one which is at the junction of central and lateral third of the brow about 8 to 10 mm above the hair bearing part of the brow so that completes our injection the injection procedure is over now we will prescribe you some eye drops which you have to use uh, four times in a day these are basically lubrication eye drops uh, at least for 3 to 4 weeks because patient would develop lag of thalamus uh, post injection in addition the patient is advised not to lie down horizontally for a couple of hours uh, maybe 3 to 4 hours after the procedure because it can gravitate across the uh, septum and affect the extraocular muscles and he can resume his regular activities immediately the peak of this action would come at around 2 weeks uh, but the action can initiate at 3 to 4 days time and uh, typically the action would last approximately for a period of 3 months sometimes it could be 4 months and a patient would return back for his next injection when he feels that his spasm is recurring